O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen. church here in Lodzla, St Peter's, in a week when our churches have reopened and at last we can sit in these beautiful buildings of ours and God will hear our prayers once again here in this place. We thank you to Derek and Francis who have joined me this morning. Thankfully, unlike the music group last Sunday, their Covid hairstyles aren't too bad but you know, I don't want people cramping my style. I'm the only one on the screen, but you will hear, you will hear the beauty of their voices. So in a week when so much has changed again, we're now able to go to our shops, we're now able to pray in our churches, and we come together to give thanks to God and continue to ask for God's love and guidance through this most difficult time for our world and our nation. So hopefully you've had an opportunity to download the sheet which has been emailed out or you're able to look at it on the front page of our website. So on our sheet. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We gather in our homes this morning in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. And as is our tradition, we begin with a gentle time of confession bringing before God those moments in this past week where we have fallen short in our love for God and in our love for each other. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Wash me thoroughly from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Make me a clean heart, O God. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have, have mercy. Cast me not away from your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may the Father of all mercy Cleanse us from our sins and restore in us his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so we respond because God has.
forgiven us. God has transformed us by his love. And we sing the words of the Gloria. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. To God be glory forever. To God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. To God be glory forever. To God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. To God be glory forever. To God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Let's bow our heads for our collect. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And Derek's going to bring us our reading from the Gospel of Matthew. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So, have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid, you are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me 
is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Psalm 86 Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. In the day of my trouble I call on you, for you will answer me. There is nothing like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Yesterday, I was um, in one of my many Zoom meetings. And that's the word, I think, that's going to come out of this time for me, the, word, the new word in my vocabulary. Zoom meetings with family, Zoom meetings with uh, church groups, Zoom meetings with um, diocesan meetings as well. And the door uh, went and um, I, I snuck away from the laptop and there on my, my doorstep was a young man who was selling, um, I think, tea towels, dishcloth, all that kind of thing from a rucksack on his back. I said, I'm, I'm really sorry, I said, I'm in uh, a Zoom meet. And I thought, this, this is genius, isn't it? I can get rid of him because I've actually got a good excuse. He said, he said, well, can I come back in an hour? And I went, oh, no, I don't think so. And he looked at my dog collar and he said, he said, why? He said, you vicars, you never buy stuff. <laughs> I thought, well, there you are. You know, um, there I am, the vicar, and I'm not buying stuff from the boy who's selling or the young man who's selling things on my doorstep. And I went back into my Zoom meeting feeling slightly depressed. Um, and uh, it was challenging. It's one of those moments of deep challenge where someone challenges you. Uh, I, I don't, as, as a person, I, I'm not a great fan of buying things off the doorstep. Um, and I don't know, I, I, we can sit and have a chat about that, I can justify that to you, but I don't, I don't tend to buy things from the doorstep. And I, I believe in a society where people shouldn't have to sell things from a rucksack on their doorstep. So there's loads of things, but it was a challenging moment. It was one of those moments where you think, oh my goodness, should I have done something different? It's a bit like coming across this gospel this morning. I often think in the week, right, the gospel for Sunday, I can't wait. What are the words? How are they going to inspire us in our lives? How are we going to gather around the gospel and think, wow, that really helps me. It helps me to think more about love. And then you come across a gospel like this and it, you, you are flattened. Flattened because the words are really difficult. And if you read this gospel this morning out of context, you could take all sorts of wonderful things from it and do all sorts of dreadful things by it. It's really important, once again, this is a passage from Matthew's Gospel where Jesus is talking to his disciples. This is not a general message to the masses, this is specific teaching to a group of people he has called to journey with him through those three years of his ministry. It's deeply challenging for them and it speaks about truths that they will come across in their lives which are going to be really difficult. So when you come across the passage 34, do not think that I've come to bring peace to the earth. I've not come to bring peace but a sword. You could take that in many different ways. 
And you could use it in many different ways. And I suspect it has been over the centuries. But what actually what Jesus is saying, he's not saying this is my intention. What he's actually pointing out to his disciples is inevitably this is what will happen. This is what will happen when God's perfect love comes into the world. It will set people against each other as it has done through the centuries. A message of peace and love, of compassion and generosity will be transformed by our human nature into something which will separate families, will separate communities, will set whole communities like it did in Northern Ireland against each other in war. So the inevitability is that these things will happen. Jesus isn't saying, I've come to do this. What he recognises that in our humanity, these things will actually happen. And the story of the young man on my door and the story in the news this morning of Marcus Rashford challenging the Prime Minister to think about school meals, all these things, and I suspect we've been through it ourselves in this time of COVID-19, there are deep challenges that we face. And the question comes for the disciples, it comes for me yesterday with that young man on my door, it comes with Marcus Rashford who grew up with a young family where they needed Um, free school meals to help them through the difficult times in their life is, is where do we put our trust in those moments? How are we going to make those difficult decisions? The psalmist knew straight away, for you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Where am I going to draw my strength when I have to make difficult decisions? Where am I going to trust when I have to face things in my life? which are really tough. I wish that I could go back to yesterday morning and have a different conversation with the young man on my door. Unfortunately, I didn't have that. And I was operating in a moment of um, just trying to make a decision. But his life, he's walking the streets of Esbourne trying to sell his wares because, well, I don't know what his story is. His story may be a very difficult one. And if I had more time, I could have spent time with him. But we face challenges and the gospel sometimes doesn't say necessarily what we want it to say but we have to look at the context of why these words are being spoken we have to sit with god's word and study it and allow it to speak to us so the good news is here in a sense for us this morning is that the world we live in is challenging jesus tells his disciples that the world we live in will throw us things which are very difficult to deal with we know that from our own stories We know that the good news of Jesus Christ isn't always positive in the lives of humanity, even though it should be, and God's kingdom should break through. But where do we turn? Jesus says at the end, those who find their life will lose it, and and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. A challenge to the world. If you're going to set your life up on your own values and standards, there is a danger that you will lose those very things. But if, you're, if you dare to take the path which I'm going to set before you, then you will find riches and treasures in your life. And in this time of lockdown, those are the things that we should remind ourselves of. Life is difficult. Life can be tough. Let us trust ourselves to God and to God's love. Now, I asked Frances to choose our hymn this morning because she's a wonderful gift. And we thought, or she thought, I can't own this. I'd like to say this is all my own thinking, but... Oh, it was Derek, was it? Okay. Um, Because the churches are open, because you can come in, we felt it would be really good to sing. Now, thank we all our God. So let's sing this hymn together.
in prayer. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen Martin, our Bishop, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen, particularly in this week when she celebrates her 94th birthday. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. And comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. And hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. And according to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. And rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Peter, St. Mary, St. James and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. And we gather our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And before final words of blessing, a big thank you to Francis and Derek for helping me this morning, putting this service together. Also, can I encourage you to come into our churches to pray, but be conscious of social distancing. Can you make sure that when you enter the church and leave that you take some of the hand sanitizer that is by the door? And um, just to be careful and try not to touch too much because the more you touch, the more we obviously have to clean down. But please come and pray. Come in back into your buildings and be close to God in prayer. So let's bow our heads for our final blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.